So we've already introduced sigma notation. In this video we're going to take a look at some examples of evaluating sums that are written in sigma notation and then also look at a few special cases. So the directions here are to find the sum. So you'll notice that the assumption here is that you understand what this notation means and that you know that this means to sum up some numbers. So in this case I have i going from 1 to 4 and the rule is i squared. So I'm going to plug in 1, I'm going to get uh, 1 squared. I'm going to add what I get when I plug in 2, which is 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared. And so this equals 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16, and that gets me to 30. All right. And this one here, I got 3 times 1 plus 5 plus 3 times 2 plus 5 plus 3 times 3 plus 5 plus 3 times 4 plus 5 and then I stop. And so these numbers evaluate to 8 plus 11 plus 14 plus 17 and those all add up to 50. Okay, so again, this, what I'm saying here is this equals 30, right? This, right, equals 50. It's a definite sum, which means it's a sum of a finite number of numbers, and I get those, those answers. Notice in these two examples, there was a variable inside the rule, and so I could plug in the index variable values, 1, 2, 3, 4, in to the function rule. So just pay attention to the next example, or the next two examples, because they confuse students. So here, you'll notice something strange. I've got the sum as i goes from 1 to 4 of 3. So I don't even have an i in here. So what does that mean? It means that there's no, uh, there's no variable to plug into, and so what this means is every single, uh, every single time I want to plug in a number, it's always just going to be 3. So when I plug in 1 for i, even though there is no i, I'm supposed to get a 3. When I plug in 2, well, the output is just going to be 3. When I plug in 4, the output, again, is going to be 3. Sorry, when I plug in 3, the output will be 3. And when I plug in 4, the output will be 3. So again, this 3 comes from i equals 1. That comes from i equals 2. That comes from i equals 3, and that comes from i equals 4. So there's nothing to plug into, but this is the sigma notation way of saying add 3 four times. And this becomes 12. Compare that to this example here, i is starting from 0, and so again, no matter what, I'm going to get out a 3. So when i is 0, I get a 3. When i is 1, I get a 3. When i is 2, I get a 3. When i is 4, I get a 3. And when i is 5, I get a 3. So this again comes from i equals 0. That's when i is 1. So this time I have 5 3's instead of 4, and again, that's a consequence of this i starting at 0, whereas that i started at 1. Okay, so sigma notation can be a little, a little bit confusing if, you're not, if you don't pay attention to those little details. Don't think of it as, well, I'm adding up just however many numbers there are at the top here. Right? I didn't add four numbers here, I added up five, because my index variable started at 0, not at 1. Okay, so we get 15 as our final answer. But pay attention to that, because that's... Um, that's a little bit of a curveball that can be confusing if you're not uh, if you're not on your game.